Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's now Tuesday, the 22nd day of June 2021. And as our headline there on the graphic says, we will be monitoring a potentially active MDR. That is the main development region, the area off the coast of Africa, all across the deep tropics through the Caribbean, the low latitude region, where a lot of powerful hurricanes have originated in the past. Usually when that is active early in the season, it is an indicator of a very favorable environment overall and a harbinger of things to come later in the season, August and September being the prime months there. So let's see what we got here from the National Hurricane Center. Of course, Claudette no longer being tracked up through here. It's gone for the most part, at least as a tropical entity. So now we have this one area down here, a tropical wave, 20% chance of development and it'll move eventually towards the windward islands over here with some shower and thunderstorm activity so barbados trinidad tobago and points north maybe up to guadalupe we'll have to be on the lookout for this we'll take a closer look tomorrow at the visible satellite and some of the other model analyses to kind of understand what to expect through there but if we look at the graphical five-day outlook it does not look like this will develop much further because there are strong upper level winds waiting for it over here and it's just not time yet again climatology generally speaking is on our side this time of year we don't have a bunch of hurricanes coming out of the deep tropics and that my friends is a good thing so looking at the infrared satellite imagery here the loop of it from Levi Cowan's website remember tropicaltidbits.com we appreciate all this being available for everybody to take advantage of and we can see this front that has come down over the eastern United States, kind of stormy along that. Sometimes when these lay over the warm waters of the western Atlantic Basin, the Gulf of Mexico and vicinity, they can be the focusing point for something to develop. But I don't see that happening in any of the global models anytime soon. Here's the tropical wave down in the deep tropics to the east, southeast of the windwards. And you can tell there's already some strong upper level winds blowing across the top and uh, kind of tearing it apart, keeping it from really organizing. Not particularly strong, those upper level winds, but enough so that I don't see this doing much more than being a rainmaker and a gusty wind producer. But that being said, you folks down in the islands know even these tropical waves that come through, they are also called easterly waves can produce enough heavy rain and some of these areas down there you know these islands are not like you see in I don't know cartoons or whatever where they are just flat with a palm tree and a coconut and like a treasure chest over somewhere they have mountains a lot of these are created from geologic uh, volcanic action over millions of years okay so they're they're not flat they got they have what we call um, you know the terrain orographic lift whatever mountains that kind of thing there's relief down there that's what the word is there's physical relief in the form of these mountains and so that rings out the moisture and you can get a lot of flash flooding so that's a big problem down there and people who live there you know that know this they are quite aware but any tourists that are in there you know they may not so spread the word let them know hey there's an easterly wave headed our way it can produce lightning and some shower and thunderstorm activity that can you know capsize boats and some of those gusty winds and this will eventually move on into the Caribbean and we'll watch what it does over here the GFS was trying to ramp it up now it's kind of backing away from that in the longer term we'll see if it comes back lately it's been kind of known to do that it's kind of a whack-a-mole here it is now it's not there now it's back we'll, we'll wait and see how that plays out Meanwhile, off the coast of Africa, another very well-developed but fairly dry tropical wave, very high amplitude, large energy pocket out there. And you can see this very, very well on the MIMIC, what we call the MIMIC water vapor um, precipitable moisture, the TPW, the total precipitable water. This is a really neat tool that was developed from the University of Wisconsin at their Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. I really like this because it just totally helps us to see these features. So here's the tropical wave uh, headed towards the islands. It's kind of stretched out, much more linear in its look. 
than really sharp and focused. That one is definitely curled up. You can see why they call it an easterly wave. I mean, normally your trade winds blow through here. You know, they would be straight if it wasn't for these impulses of energy that come off. There's one there. There's another one there. Um, there might be one coming through, yeah, right about in here. Not as defined through portions of the Caribbean. But these are common features during the hurricane season. Rolling off of Africa, some of them get their start over the Ethiopian highlands, way over on the eastern side of Africa, and they roll off there. And so really easy to spot these on this TPW product. You can also see the dry air that gets filtered down, the Saharan air layer part of that as well. Very, very useful tool. And uh, you can also see here in the eastern Pacific, there's some energy starting to curl up down here south of Central America that will crawl up along uh, and I say crawl, it's going to move fairly close and slow along the southern Mexican coastline here. I'll show you that on the Hurricane Center's Tropical Weather Outlook for the Pacific real quick. So there it is, just south of Guatemala and El Salvador. And you can see that nicely represented right there in the TPW product. And this will move as the Hurricane Center shot was showing you there. Uh, along the southern coast of Mexico with a pretty high chance of development over the next few days. Most of the global models develop this into a cyclone, tropical cyclone that is, and then bring it into Mexico. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see where that happens. Could be some impacts for our friends along the southern Mexican coastline. Uh, so we'll watch that very closely. All right, so you can see most of these features, at least in the western portions of the basin on the vorticity signature product here also from the university of wisconsin and there's the front that came through that's the remnants still there the energy is still there but there's just not much in the way of latent heat in the ocean to keep this tropical but that's claudette the remnants of it moving well south of the canadian maritimes for the time being it might scrape up here past newfoundland but you know no big deal not a real big problem uh, not you know certainly compared to a hurricane racing up out of the deep tropics this is nothing like that there's the system south of central america that will go on to develop up in this area and watch over the next couple of days as that really comes together helping to kind of show you the point that i make about how these systems bundle up and how easy it is to identify them in this particular product of the vorticity signature there's the tropical wave. You know, again, not very well defined. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It, it, we've certainly seen better, put it that way. And there's some energy there. And like I mentioned, that will move through and bring some impacts to the islands. And then right off the coast of Africa, that other feature trying to make its way off to the west. All right, so my friend Dylan Federico down at Wink TV in southwest Florida, a Mississippi State graduate. He's a good friend of Greg Nordstrom. You hear me, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know who Greg is as well. Uh, Dylan sent me these. He and I and Greg talk frequently. Uh, what is this? Well, this is sort of your all the different cyclone tracks from, in this case, the Euro. This is the Ensemble Prediction System, the EPS. And this is from the overnight run, the Zero Z run last night. And what is it showing? Well, this is very very interesting. It is showing an active main development region. Now this is not, you know, 30 or 40 storms coming across. Not singularly. It is the ensembles. Each of the members, 51 members, a bunch of them are showing activity. And some of them, depending on the color shade, like this red one right here, are fairly strong. And even some of these blue ones in here, you can look at the color graph up here and figure it out. And so this is a symptom. This is sort of your early warning, your canary in the coal mine, whatever analogy you want. That's it. That's what you look for. The ensemble prediction system, when you just look at one model, the operational or the deterministic, as we call them sometimes, and it shows something, well, that's okay. And a lot of times the operational models, especially within about five days, are very useful and very helpful but it is more helpful to expand and look at the ensembles. What does changing a few variables, and that gets very complex in terms of how that happens, who determines those variables, what variables get changed, 
that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Um, but that's what happens is you get a lot of different outputs. So it's literally like playing what if. And so the bottom line is we see a fairly concentrated area. Let's change the color here so it shows up better. Down in the main development region, you see the signal very strong over here in the southeast Pacific for something to develop uh, from that system that I already showed you, the, the one that already exists. So this is over the next 15 days. So we're talking about two weeks, Euro showing quite an active main development region, especially considering we're in the last third of June. The EFS, the Ensemble Forecast System, part of the GFS, also showing a similar setup with deep tropical development and, of course, the system over here south of Mexico. So the bottom line, the takeaway is, hey, we're going to have to watch because if you get an active MDR in June or July, it is usually a sign of a very active hurricane season ahead. So we'll wait and see what, if anything, comes of this. Uh, we know that there are plenty of pockets of energy over Africa, these tropical waves that will seed the Atlantic. So we'll see. Over the next couple of days, maybe we get a mention from the Hurricane Center, the National Hurricane Center's Tropical Weather Outlook might start picking up on some of this if the signal remains strong and believable. Uh, we'll just wait and see. Really neat products here, and I appreciate Dylan sending these to me via text message earlier today. Makes my job easier. I don't have to hunt them down. All right, real quick, taking a look at the GFS here, the operational. There's that word again. So this is the operational model, and this is from today, the 12Z guidance. And we're going to really focus on this area right through here. So I'll leave that little box up. We'll put this out into motion one frame at a time. Look at the energy that bundles up there. There you go. That's the signature of a tropical cyclone. And then it kind of comes into Mexico there. Could become a hurricane. That's a fairly stout signal, very strong signal in the 850 millibar vorticity field of that model. That's about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. So this is just under five days out. So between four and five days, the potential for tropical cyclone activity down here in southern Mexico. So once this gets named and trackable, we will use our interactive tracking map over on the Hurricane Track Insider site to really zoom in because it's got these awesome place names. I mean, it's one of the best tracking maps out there. And uh, our patrons, our crowdfunding folks, get access to that. And they actually helped to build it. So we'll take a look at that, a very useful tool. Uh, once this thing gets named and, is, and it's a trackable feature, and we'll take a look at where it might impact down there. Because we do have people that view my videos from Mexico, and so it matters. want to make sure people are aware anywhere we can make them aware. Now, the Atlantic shot here, this is a wide shot. There's the west coast of Africa. I had not had to show this in a while. Um, eastern parts of North America over here. Just to outline what's what for you real quick, there's Florida, the Gulf Coast, Central America, and South America over here. Now look at this giant, I mean, just a massive subtropical ridge kind of oriented southwest to northeast through here. Huge chunk of air. And that is exactly what that is, just this massive bubble of air. Not really a bubble, but you get the idea. It's just a huge area of high pressure sitting over the Atlantic, clockwise flow around it for the most part. You have the eastern side of it, that's the Azores part of the Azores Bermuda High couplet, and then the western Atlantic Ridge, the Bermuda part of it over on the west side. Absolutely sprawling and quite formidable already. And so what that does is it helps these easterly waves come all the way across. Not much break in the ridge out here, just a little weakness there. And this is in the lower part of the atmosphere anyway, but that's one heck of a ridge, put it that way. All right, so what are we looking for? Well, there's the tropical wave currently east of the islands. This is that other energy I was showing you earlier. So let's just look at the next five days and see if anything catches our eye, our collective eyes, plural, I guess, right? So we put this out 30 hours, 36 hours, finally to 48. There's the tropical wave getting closer to the islands. Not much fanfare with it. You know, it doesn't flare up too much. Uh, more energy coming off Africa over here. And nothing else, though, around the Gulf or the Caribbean to take note of that starts developing 
in the deep tropics. Now, by about 60 hours, that tropical wave amplifies just a little bit, moving through the northeastern Caribbean. So you folks in the Virgin Islands, down to Antigua, Barbuda, you know, keep your eyes open on for this. You know, south of there, maybe Guadeloupe. We'll have to wait and see. This is still a few days out, but not much of a reflection of it, but doesn't matter. It's still going to bring some sensible weather. Then at day four, right there, hour 96, circle it for you. Look at that. Right off the coast of Africa, a uh, piece of energy, vorticity closing off there, south of the Cabo Verde Islands, Cape Verde Islands, whichever you want to uh, call it. It's fine with me. And it stays kind of intact there, you know, then dries out a little bit maybe. And we're out beyond day four and five, which is you know, just, I usually don't look that far out into time because it's less reliable. But you get the idea. Tropics looking a little bit more active, a little bit more in the way of signs that we could have a very busy hurricane season ahead if these things come to fruition. But that's a big if. We'll have to see if the ensembles are just overactive, if they're picking up on something that's not going to happen. We don't know yet because we don't have keys to the future just yet. Remember the Back to the Future when Biff Tannen, I think it was number two, went to the future and got 50 years of sports almanac or whatever it was and caused all those problems? Well, we don't have that for hurricanes, uh, unfortunately. I mean, that would be great. But we do have the guidance, though. The ensembles do help at least paint a picture of what to look for, and that can be a useful tool, and we'll just have to see how things develop. All righty, have a, uh, yourselves a great rest of your Tuesday. Don't forget, on the social media front, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, those are the three big ones that we take advantage of. And it's all Hurricane Track. That's the brand name. You see the logo down there under the 2021. Look for that, and then you know it's us. And uh, if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell or whatever it is these days so you get notified when I post one of these videos, and you will be in the know. All right, have a great rest of your Tuesday. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon.